Good day viewers, my name is Darlington Okoka and I welcome you once more to Dell with Electrical YouTube channel. Last week we talked extensively on understanding the vector group of a transformer in which we were able to talk on the nomenclatures used in naming a transformer's vector group, their names and we talked extensively on the star Y connection of the windings. But today, we are going to be talking extensively on the delta connection of the windings of a transformer and using the same naming technology or naming nomenclatures. Now, on the delta connections, we are going to extensively talk on six different types of connections. Six. We have six different types of connections. So let's start on our screen with the first one, which is D1. Now, if you look at the screen properly, you see that D1 is means one o'clock. And that means one o'clock, your windings is connected in 30 degrees away from the windings. So we have, to, they are 30 degrees apart, one o'clock. So this is your diagram of a delta connection. De this is how delta is. So your A, your B, and your C. And you can see they are moving in clockwise direction. This is A in this direction, this is B in this direction, and this is C. Now this is your A. I've told you earlier in your previous class when we were talking about the star connection that your cores are fixed. The cores are fixed. So you can see that the core A is fixed, the core B is fixed, and the core C is also fixed. Look at it. So then your windings is one o'clock, and your one o'clock sign, this is your one o'clock sign, and the angle between them from 12 to 1 is one hour. And we said one hour movement is 30 degrees, and that is what we have at 30 degrees. So if you look at these windings now, out of these three locations, your A, your B, and your C, which of these locations does this windings fall into? You could see that it falls into your A. That means your W1 will be in A, your W2 will be in B, and your W3 will be in C. Please take, take cognizance of the arrows. You see this arrow, this is your polarity side of the winding, and this is your non-polarity side of the winding. So your polarity side of this winding is connected to A. The non-polarity side is connected to B. So let's check. Let's look at the next diagram. So the diagram becomes like this. You see, the windings, the, the, the W1 is connected to, the polarity side is connected to A, W2, the polarity side is connected to B, and W3, the polarity side is connected to C. The non-polarity side of W1 is connected to C, the non-polarity side of W2 is connected to A, the non-polarity side of W3 is connected to B. So how do we draw this now? Now, first thing you do, you, you draw the windings. This is the windings of the transformer W1. This is the windings of the transformer W2. And this is the windings of the transformer W3. Now this is the polarity. The top side is the polarity. This is the polarity side of W1. This is the polarity side of W2. This is the pol polarity side of W3. Then this other side is the non-polarity side of W1. Non-polarity side of W2 non-polarity side of W3. Now look at this uh, delta connection. The polarity side of W1 is connected to A. So this is the polarity side of W1 is connected to A, the core of A. The polarity side of W2 is connected to the core of B. The polarity side of W2 is connected to the core of B. The polarity side of W3 is connected to the core of C. The polarity side of W3 is connected to the core of C. Now look at the other one. The non-polarity side of W1 is connected to C. The non-polarity side of W1 is connected to C. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to A. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to A. The non-polarity side of W3 is connected to B. The non-polarity side of W3 is connected to B. So this is how to draw the vector diagram of a D1. This is, if you go and check anywhere, this is the diagram of a D1 connection. Of a delta that is on one o'clock. Then the next one is D5. D5 signifies that the one this is on a one o'clock position. If you look at it, this is our delta connection. This is our five o'clock, exactly how it is on your clock. This is it means that they are 150 degree apart. If you look at is it A, is it B or C that represent this five o'clock? If you look at it carefully, is your B connection. So when you superimpose this B here your W1 will be here, it will move in color direction, that means W2 will be here, W3 will be here. So you look at it carefully, the, from this now, you see that W1 is here, W2 is here, W3 is here. Take a look at the arrow. 
means that the polarity side is connected to B. So you draw your windings, you draw your W2, your W3. Your W, the polarity side of W1 is connected to B. The polarity side of W1 is connected to B. The polarity side of W2 is connected to C. The polarity side of W2 is connected to C. The polarity side of W3 is connected to A. The polarity side of W3 is connected to A. See, then the non-polarity side of W1 is connected to A. The non-polarity side of W1 is connected to A. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to B. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to B. And the non-polarity side of W3 is connected to C. The non-polarity side of W3 is connected to C. So in this case, you've successfully done that of D5, which is 5 o'clock. The next one is D9, which is 9 o'clock. You could see how it's connected. You could see it. So when you connect it, you see that it's 19 degrees already. Now, with this arrow, which does it represent? You could see it represents your C. That means your W1 is, the polarity side of W1 will come like this. The polarity side of W2 will go like this. The polarity side of W3 will go like this. So if you convert this to a winding, you could see that W1, polarity side is connected to C. Polarity side of W1 is connected to C. The polarity side of W2 is connected to A. The polarity side of W2 is connected to A. The polarity side of W3 is connected to B. The polarity side of W3 is connected to B. The non-polarity side of W1 is connected to B. The non-polarity side of W1 is connected to B. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to C. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to C. And the non-polarity side of W3 is connected to A. The non-polarity side of W3 is connected to A. So this is how you do your D9 connection. That's delta connection connected in 90 degrees apart. The next one is D11. If you look at this D11 carefully, it means 11 o'clock. You why this is on 11 o'clock. This is your delta and this is your angle. So if you look at this winding that is on 11 o'clock, which does it look like? It looks like this is your B connection. So you superimpose this on your this. So when you superimpose it, this is what you get. Your W1 is the polarity side is connected to A. For your W2, the look at it. Is it's supposed to be moving anticlockwise. So you'll be asking yourself, why? Look, is is facing in this direction. So it's connected. W1 is connected to W1 is connected to A. W2 is connected to B. W3 is connected. So how you came along this is is based on this diagram here. Please take take note. W1 is here. So since W1 is here, don't go and make a mistake to go and put it here. You see that this is B. It's supposed to be coming to B, but it's moving away from B. So that means W22 that is supposed to be going to C will be moving away from C. Look at it very well. W1 is supposed to be going to B, but from this angle now, from this arrow, it's moving away because you are superimposing it here. It's moving away. So you see that W1 is moving away from B. That means W2 will be moving away from C. That means W3 will be moving away from A. I hope you get this. So if you don't get it, then you, you, you might be lost because exactly what we have here is what we are trying to put. You see your W1, please listen, W1, you should bring it here. This is your B line. So this arrow is supposed to be facing B, but it's moving away from B. That means the W22 is supposed to be facing C, but it will be moving away from C. The arrow will be moving away from C. Your W3 is supposed to be facing A, but it's moving away from A. That's why you have, you have this. So with this that we have now, you, 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 you can draw your diagram. So when you draw, this is your wind is W1, wind is W2, wind is W3. So your wind is W1, the polarity side is connected to A. Polarity side is connected to A. Your wind is W2, the polarity side is connected to B. Polarity W2, polarity side is connected to B. Your winding W3, the polarity side is connected to C. You see, W3, polarity is connected to C. Why the non-polarity of W1 is connected to B? 
you see this is w1 this is the polarity going so the non polarity is connected to b the non polarity of w1 is connected to b this is the non polarity of w2 is connected to c non polarity of w2 is connected to c and this is a w3 the non polarity is connected to a the non polarity of w3 is connected to a so obviously this is your d11 and here you see your d11 you know that this is how you are supposed to draw the vector diagram the next one is d3 d3 means 3 o'clock 90 degrees too so you can see your 90 degrees this is how it is obviously from a b and c this diagram of this one this shows that it's on this line so when you bring superimpose this w1 on this line you could see that the arrow is moving away from c because this line is c line so it's moving away from c that is why how all of them will move away from c too so if you put your w1 here your w22 will be moving away from a your w3 will be moving away from b so that is how you get it w1 is here moving away from c w2 moving away from a w3 moving away from b so if you draw your vector diagram too the same thing will happen your w1 the polarity side is connected to b your polarity side is connected to b you see it your w2 polarity side is connected to c w2 polarity side is connected to c w3 polarity side is connected to a w3 polarity side is connected to a w1 the non-polarity side is connected to c w1 the non-polarity side is connected to c w2 the non-polarity side is connected to a w2 the non-polarity side is connected to a w3 the non-polarity side is connected to b this is w3 this is w3 the non-polarity side is connected to b so this is the vector diagram is very easy so the last one we are going to be talking about is d7 if you look at your d7 very well it means seven o'clock and this is the symbol for seven o'clock look at the symbol seven o'clock 150 degrees apart three um seven o'clock so if you look at this diagram seven this winding way is drawn you see that it represents your a but it's moving away from a so that means your w1 will be on a your w2 will be on b but it's moving away from b your w3 will be on c but it's moving away from c so the diagram automatically becomes this if you see it it becomes this so this is your w1 moving away from a this is your w2 moving away from b this is your w3 moving away from c so if you draw your windings your w1 w2 w3 if you draw it very well you see that w1 is connected to c your w1 now is connected to c your w2 is connected to a w2 is connected to a your w3 is connected to b your w3 that's the polarity side of w3 is connected to b then the non-polarity side of w1 the non-polarity side of w1 look at it here is connected to a the non-polarity side of w1 is connected to a the non-polarity side of w2 is connected to b the non-polarity side of w2 is connected to b and the non-polarity side of w3 is connected to c the non-polarity side of this is connected to c so you could see that the data connection is also is very easy to connect a lot of people find it difficult to draw this vector diagram but with this analysis i believe that it's very easy for you to see how to connect your delta connection perfectly and get your vector group perfectly i believe that this video is very educating please kindly click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel because next week we are going to also be talking about how to see the delta and star connection being connected on a transformer now we are talking about individually we have talked about star individually we have talked about delta individually but next week we are going to see how we superimpose the star and delta connection one having the low voltage winding the other one having the high voltage windings and we we'll superimpose them together so feel free to click on the notification icon so as to get notified when this new video is being posted to this channel Thank you for visiting you there with Electrical YouTube channel. Hope to see you in our subsequent video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.